Um, look, let's uh, let's set the stage. Uh, in spite of what be what may be being said by uh, buildings down the street on the other end of Pennsylvania, uh, this legislation is exactly the congressional review, review that we've been working on for day one. And I want to thank everyone here for allowing this legislation to be in the form that it's in today with 100 percent of the integrity that we had hoped to be a part of this process embodied in this piece of legislation. What this legislation does, I think everyone understands that these Iran nuclear negotiations are incredibly important to the citizens that we represent. I think all of us uh, would like to see a strong negotiated agreement uh, that ensures that Iran does not get a nuclear weapon. But what this legislation does is allow us, Congress has been a partner in this, Congress as we know has passed four pieces of legislation since 2010 that most people credit for having brought Iran to the negotiating table. Uh, many times, uh, let's face it, uh, this was not something that the administration favored, but Congress prevailed, and the sanctions that we have put in place are the sanctions that have brought, economy, brought the Iranian economy down certainly a great deal. It certainly caused the inflation and the destabilizing effect that has caused them to want to be at the negotiating table. What we have before us today is a bill that forces the administration, before they are able to lift the sanctions that we collectively put in place that brought them to the table, it forces the administration to bring to us every detail if there happens to be a final agreement, every detail. Um, we've left time frames in here. We've worked through with the parliamentarian. We've worked through the House to make sure that the procedures are appropriate. I know that Ben and I will have a colloquy in a minute to, to further confirm that. But what this does, it means that the sanctions that have been put in place by this body, by the Senate and by the House, cannot be lifted, cannot be lifted without the administration bringing to us every detail of the deal. Then the clock will start, and there'll be a period of time that Congress, that Congress will have the ability to, to debate and decide whether Congress uh, wants to move ahead with a resolution of approval or a resolution of disapproval. During that time, no congressional mandated sanctions can be lifted. After that process is over, there's a third process that is very important. I think everybody understands what has happened uh, in North Korea, where arrangements were made, but there was no follow through. And a very important aspect, a third leg to this agreement, is that Congress stays involved if an agreement is reached. And if one is not disapproved, Congress stays involved. And every 90 days, the administration has to certify that in every way, Iran is in compliance. And if there are violations within a 10-day period, they have to give that to Congress so that we have the ability, if we wish, to quickly reapply the sanctions that, if a deal is approved, uh, would be alleviated. So I think this puts Congress in its rightful role. People should know, and I think everyone understands, the sanctions that are being negotiated right now, Ron, are the nuclear sanctions only. The sanctions relative to uh, ballistic missile testing, they stay in place. The sanctions relative to terrorism, they stay in place. The sanctions relative to human rights, they stay in place. And so today we're only focused on the nuclear piece, but I would say in the event over time these sanctions are lifted because a deal is approved and Congress chooses not to disapprove it, I would just say to everyone here, uh, this bill gives us more reporting on terrorism than we've ever had more reporting on ballistic missile testing than we've ever had, more reporting on human rights than we've ever had. And we will have that entire arsenal of sanctions that we put in place since 2010 to reapply in those areas if we feel like Iran is, again, doing things that are not in our national interest and certainly not in the countries. So I want to thank, uh, again, the ranking member, I want to thank uh, everybody who has worked with us in this regard. I know that 
And there may be some other, uh, many people may have opening comments, but uh, it has been a true pleasure to work with Senator Cardin and others uh, for us to be in the place that we are with the entire integrity of the congressional review process that we started with staying in place. And with that, uh, I'll turn it over to our ranking member uh, who worked with us to get this in a place that I hope many Democrats will be able to join in. And he did so valiantly, he did so toughly, but he did so with a temperament uh, that allowed us to move along in a very productive way.